friends welcome to my youtube channel let's discuss about temporomandibular joint tmj as you all know that tmj is a complex joint so the topic is also complex let's divide the topic into two parts first part constitute introduction and its anatomy second part constitute development and its anomalies histology blood supply nerve supply lymphatic drainage movements and its clinical consideration introduction of tmj Temporo stands for temporal bone, mandibular for mandibular condyle, and joint is the articulation between two bones. So, temporomandibular joint is the articulation between articular fossa of temporal bone above and mandibular condyle below. It is a ginglimo diarthroidal synovial joint. Ginglimus means hinge joint that allows motion in single plane. Diarthroidal is gliding motion of two articular surface. It is synovial joint of condylar variety. It is classified as complex joint as joint cavity is divided into two compartments by intraarticular disc. It is also multiaxial joint as joint allows several directions of movements. Now unique feature of TMJ, it is only mobile joint of skull. Apart from other synovial joint, articular surface is covered by fibrous cartilage. Only joint of our body having rigid in point of closure, as teeth making the occlusal contact, bilateral diarthrosis, right and left joint function together. Now, anatomy of TMJ. Components of TMJ. Articular surface is formed by upper articular surface by articular fossa of temporal bone and articular eminence of temporal bone while lower articular surface formed by head of mandible as articular surface is covered by fibrocartilage so called atypical synovial joint other components articular capsule articular disc ligaments and muscles we can easily visualize the articulation between temporal bone and head of mandible Now let's discuss about mandibular condyle. They are ovoid convex processes as seen in figure. Articulating surface is located in anterior superior aspect facing the posterior slope of articular eminence. Anterior view of condyle show medial and lateral pole. It is noticeably convex as viewed from side and slightly convex from front. It is wider mediolaterally than anterior posteriorly. Articular fossa or glenoid fossa, we can see in figure. It is an ovoid depression on squamous portion of temporal bone just anterior to auditory canal. Boundaries of glenoid fossa. Anteriorly, there is articular eminence. Posteriorly, tympanic plate of petrous part of temporal bone. Medially, spine of sphenoid and laterally, root of zygomatic forces. Now, articular eminence. It is labeled in figure. It is a bony elevation located immediately anterior to articular fossa and forms the anterior root of zygomatic processes. Articular capsule. We can see in figure, joint space is enclosed by a dense collagenous sheet of tissue called articular capsule. Anterior portion of articular capsule it is attached above to ascending slope of articular eminence and margin of glenoid fossa, while attached below to neck of condyle. Posterior portion is attached above to ischemotympanic fissure and below to posterior margin of ramus of mandible adjacent to neck. Articular disc. It is labeled in the figure. It is an oval fibrocartilaginous structure situated between mandibular condyle and temporal bone. Divides the joint cavity into large upper meniscotemporal upper compartment, helps in gliding motion, and small lower meniscomandibular called lower compartment. Rotational movement takes place in the lower compartment. We can see in figure the superior surface is concave or convex, while inferior surface is concave. Parts anterior thick band. Posterior thick band, intermediate band, and more posteriorly, there is bilaminar joint, which is level in a figure. Articular disc. 
posteriorly discs attached to retrodiscal tissue which is area of loose connective tissue highly vascularized and highly innervated posterior thick band splits into two lamina upper lamina contains elastic fiber and prevents the slipping of disc while yawning and lower lamina contains non elastic fiber and prevents the excessive rotation of disc over condyle functions of articular disc as it is soft tissue between two hard tissue so it prevents the friction between two components proprioceptive nerve endings in anterior most and posterior most region of disc regulates the movement it acts as secusion against heavy load also acts as shock absorber as it increases the area of contact helps in distribution of weight across the joint which may prevent the wear it stabilizes the condyle by filling up the space between the articular surface these are the functions of articular disc ligaments first of all primary ligaments primary ligaments are capsular ligament temporomandibular ligament and collateral ligament accessory ligaments are sphenomandibular and stylomandibular ligament discuss about collateral or discal lapel ligament it is attached medial and lateral border of articular disc to respective pole of condyle we can see in figure function it restricts the movement of disc away from condyle and also aids in hanging movement of condyle second temporomandibular ligament is a true ligament formed by thickening of lateral aspect of capsular ligament we can show in figure function it strengthens the lateral aspect of capsule third sphenomandibular ligament it represent the vestigial remnant of Meckel's cartilage of first pharyngeal arch it is attached above to spine of sphenoid and below to lingual half mandible it is shown in figure clinical consideration oh it is important in dentistry it is an important landmark for administration of local anesthetic during inferior alveolar nerve block fourth stylomandibular ligament it is formed due to thickening of investing layer of deep cervical fascia it is shown in figure it separates the parotid and submandibular glands it extends from apex of styloid process of temporal bone to posterior border of angle of mandible function the ligament along with spinomandibular ligaments limits the excessive opening of mandible muscular components major muscle closely associated with tmj is lateral pterygoid muscle it constitute two heads upper head origin from infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid which gets inserted into articular disc and fibrous capsule of tmj lower head origin from lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate and insert into neck of condyle of mandible other muscles medial pterygoid masseter and temporalis we shall discuss them in detail in muscle of mastication topic thank you very much for watching please like subscribe and tap the bell icon for the part 2